This is how you get a junior developer job and work remotely in 2023. If you are not following the news, the tech industry is quite bad right now. Companies stopped hiring and the bar to get in as a junior dev is quite high. Besides this, if you're learning code in 2023, the amount of information and resources is absolutely insane. You are pretty much drowning in information. There are so many resources out there. You have Free Code Camp, Code Academy, Khan Academy, Udemy, Scrimba, you name it. And this is exactly how I felt when I was learning code seven years ago. But now, gosh, the whole industry is off the charts. And the worst part is that if you kind of push through and finally build a portfolio of applications, recruiters won't really look at you. They will assume you don't have experience and they will flat out ignore you. You can literally fill in thousands of applications and never hear a callback. I remember once I had a call from a recruiter and I was invited to their offices in London to be profiled by their agency and to be sent to interview with some of their clients. I remember Perfectly. I took a day off from work. I put on some nice clothes, my nice shirt. I cycled for one hour and a half from my home in Croydon, some ghetto area of London to Bishopgate in the city center. I arrived there exhausted and I see this glass building, which back then was like a dream becoming a reality. You know, I literally felt like that was it. All the work is about to pay off. This thing is going to pay dividends. I fold my bike and get in the elevator. I arrange my shirt while surrounded by all these people dressed up in a suit. And as a side note, this reminds me of a scene from The Matrix or something like that. Anyway, I arrive up, I meet up with the recruiter and he was a really nice guy, right? We have some back and forth for about 45 minutes and he says he likes me. And in my mind, I'm like, cha-ching, you know, the money comes. But then he tells me, but you have nothing to show us. You are talking about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but we are not seeing anything. You have no portfolio. And that was the moment when I got pissed off. Okay. I cycled back home and I was feeling like a big loser. I had one opportunity and I blew it off. And then I realized how many people miss opportunities because they don't have the skills. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation and moving in 2023 opportunities become less frequent. There's budget cuts. Tech is becoming very mature and hiring managers are not looking for juniors, they are only looking for seniors. So who can blame them? They want the highest return of investment off of each candidate. As much as this sounds like a rigged game that can't be beaten, there is hope. In the past three months, three of my students got jobs. Some of them, they are making 70K and some are making 80K or more. You can get a developer job that lets you work from home, pays you good money, even as a junior, and gives you freedom, but you have to be smart about it and strategic. The worst thing that you can do right now is to float around, not doing anything and being confused and scared because of the AI or all this other stuff that's going around in the industry. The secret to getting a developer job in 2023 is to build real world products and to remove the junior level from your forehead. As much as we want to believe that people are out there looking to pay it back to help a junior like you, the reality is that people know how far removed juniors are from reality. And let me explain this to you. An employee is an investment. A junior is a gamble that many companies are not looking to take, okay? Because a junior costs them a lot of money. You need training, you need coaching, you need mentorship, and you need time to learn how to use Git, how to communicate, how to write good code, etc., etc. That's why companies prefer to hire people with experience. And this is nothing new to tech. And this is something that is true for any profession. If I need to do a heart surgery, I would pay 10 times more to get it done by a doctor who did it 1000 times than to pay a fresher that just started out. In fact, I will not do it even if the fresher would pay me. It's not about you, it's about your skills. So what I do in my mentorship program and I suggest to you to do as well is to force the experience by making people work in a team building a real world product. This role takes longer, but it pays off in the end. If you go into the job market without skills, you'll face unnecessary rejections and frustrations. The tech is simple, right? Here's the list. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Next, Style Components, Redux, Node.js, Express, Postgres, Redis, AWS, and Docker. One thing that I suggest you to do is to focus on the actual projects that you'll build with that roadmap instead of the tech. As you can see, there's a lot. So spend a week or so planning and crafting your roadmap and follow it like your life depends on it. Don't jump ahead first with the hope you'll figure it out later. 
I spent months making my roadmap and over the past week I started revamping it with extra new challenges and requirements. This is where you have to spend the most amount of time on your roadmap. Figure that out. If you get anything from this video, then it's this. Build as much as you can. Instead of building 30 projects in 30 days, build one project in 30 days. Take this advice to heart and follow it. Next, self-awareness. Understand that you are not as good as you might think you are. You might get some ego hits, but it's true. If you never worked as a developer, you have no point of comparison. So whatever you might be doing that you might be super proud of, might be the most trivial task a developer might do. So when you put your Pokedex, weather app, calculator and to-do app in your portfolio, you pretty much put a big sign that says, don't hire me, I still have a lot to learn, I will need a lot of help. Companies are not there looking to support you, coach you, nurture you. People want to make money off of you. So make sure your code and your apps are up to the standard. Be relentless and never be satisfied. Always want more. And I want you to hold yourself to the highest standard. Don't do your best, do what's necessary. Seek out realistic feedback and not just feel good feedback. Next, besides your technical skills, you want to get better at manipulating data. You should be extremely comfortable with array methods such as reduce, map, filter, find, sum, every, for each. Objects should be your best friends. You should be fine and comfortable transforming one array into something entirely different, like another array, an object, number, strings, booleans. Same goes for objects. You should master this because this is gonna be the bulk of your work you'll do as a front-end developer. Receive data, manipulate it, and display it. Next, prepare for interviews. After you finish working on that big project, Describe your work in a quantifiable way. What problem you solved, how you solved it, and what did you use to solve it? If you just list out skills like React without context, you'll not be taken seriously. But if you say something like improved software development processes by implementing a continuous integration pipeline using GitHub Actions and Docker containers, incorporating linting and type checking using Husky, pre-commit hooks and running unit, integration and end-to-end -end tests on every pre-push and new pull request. The task was very basic, setting up pre-commit hooks for checking the quality of your code, but that description there will improve your chances of getting an interview. Once you're able to score interviews, prepare your basic JavaScript and React question. Interviewers will test your basics, and this is where everyone messes up. One of my students got told by the interviewer that seniors with five years experience don't know how to answer the questions I showed them. For example, the basics, such as the difference between var, let, and const. It's a super basic question that everyone gets wrong. Besides that, in the interview, you want to be personable, right? Show your competence and just chill, okay? You are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Of course, now you need to know what projects you need to build from beginner till the end what is the right way to write your code, when you're ready to apply to jobs, so you don't do it too early and stack up rejections for no reason just because you got in too early. You want to know what questions to prepare, you want to practice those questions so you can deliver them properly, you want to get a resume that will attract recruiters to you instead of being ignored, and you want more practical advice and more in-depth advice. This is very simple, not easy. I've done this dozens of times before at this stage, so if you also want to become a successful remote developer as a junior without spending 25k for a bootcamp or 100k for a degree and without wasting years in tutorial hell spinning your wheels, then I have a suspiciously generous offer for you and that is a free consultation call with me or my team. We look at your situation, we look at your skills, we look at your goals, we look at your life and we'll tell you what steps you need to take in your specific situation to learn code and land your first remote developer job. This is especially for you if you're a complete beginner, you've never done this before, you feel lost and overwhelmed by the available information, there's so much content out there, you don't know what to do, this call is exactly for you. If you already have a little bit of a skill and you're like, I pretty much know what I wanna do, but just don't know how, I don't know how to be efficient and what to focus on, that call is also for you. And look, even if you say, I'm really good at making apps, you finished a bootcamp and still not getting any traction with your job applications, 
then this call is also for you. Click on the first link in the description. It brings you to my website. Click any of the blue buttons. Choose the exact date and time you want to talk to me or someone from my team. Fill in the application. And if you can't fill that application, then this is not for you. You're gonna have to work hard on this. This is not gonna be a magic deal. It's gonna take a few months of work, but the end is absolutely worth it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.